Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I was gonna say good night, but no, good evening. Uh, anywhere you are in the world, my name is Ola Opine, and welcome back to Business Analysis Simplified. I hope you all had uh, an amazing week. I hope you had a fantastic week. And I hope your weekend is beginning to in evolve into an enjoyable one. So business analysis simplified. In each episode, we try to draw parallels between a business analysis technique or a business analysis concept idea we draw parallels between that technique and everyday living. Uh, each week I'm joined by, I'm joined. Yeah, I see her now. Sorry, I was trying to look out for her. My co-host, Kemi Dan Owolabi. I'm trying to pull her in because this discussion cannot happen without her. The dual dynamic is important here. So I'm trying to pull her in. Give me a second here while I pull her in, if I can. Okay, I think she would. Uh, she'll pop up, pop up again. So each episode, guys, we bring you a concept, a business analysis concept or a an idea or a technique. And then we draw parallels with everyday living because the idea is if organizations are using business analysis techniques or those concepts to better the business, to better the organization, to better the company, we as individuals should be able to apply the principles of those techniques. We should be able to apply it to everyday living. And that's what we do each time we... Oh, sorry guys. That's what we do each time. <laughs> Okay, I am bringing KDO to join us. Hopefully she's able to join. Yeah, so we bring you those techniques and then, oh my God, it took a while to, to bring you in. I don't know what's, what happened. Can you hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Me neither. I was like, okay, Ola, what's going on? Let me come here in. <laughs> Good morning to you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Awesome. Conceptual modeling. Right? Yes, That's what I we're talking about. Oh. Talk. I was still chatting away. I haven't talk, talked about the title for no, today's no, no. episode. Actually, Ola, just hold your breath right there. Before we even talk about today's episode and what we're going to be talking about, I have great and amazing news for everyone listening to us. Share away. MB yeah, MBA, Mastering Business <laughs> Analysis class is starting August 19. I am so excited, like beyond Same excited. Here. Same because here. this Same is a life changer. It is a game changer for any prospective aspiring would-be business analyst. For someone that's already sip up certified or you're already a business analyst or you're just looking to hone your skills. It is for everyone mastering the art of business analysis. And guess what? This particular course is IBA endorsed. What yeah, does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it means for the professional, you get 30 PDs by just being in this class. Mm -hmm. This 10-weeks program, I tell you, like I said, it's a game changer. I'm sorry, Ola, I, I just couldn't hold myself. Like, I was just super excited. I was like, That's come okay. on. That's okay. I'm rubbing <laughs> up on that excitement right now. <laughs> yeah, and there is a link in the chat. If you are interested, click that link, get in touch with us, you know, send, uh, the, it's going to take you to our website, essentially. You look at the offering. Feel free to send me myself a message, send all our message, and then we'll hook you up. MBA from PMBs. Yes. That is the thing. It's late, guys. Late. Let's go. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sign up for this uh, for the class. So we wait. Today's topic is conceptual mm -hmm. modeling. <laughs> I got carried away for a second. <laughs> it's conceptual modeling. And you know, there's a saying, there's a saying that goes, um, a picture is worth 10,000 words, absolutely. right? Absolutely, so, absolutely. So conception mod conceptual modeling in business analysis is a technique that provides 
a visual, visual representation of the business entities and the relationships between those entities to enable yeah. better communication among stakeholders. And what it does is it makes, you know, the development details of a software, uh, uh, of a software, it makes it easier. Yeah. It makes it relatable, right? As against uh, stakeholders, all the business and uh, business analysts in charge of the project implementation as against them writing lengthy documents, right? If they present those requirements in visuals, like give the give stakeholders visual representation, yeah. that people are, I mean, they, they are more likely to relate Absolutely. to a, a picture okay. than yeah. just written uh, words that nobody, nobody ever gets to read. And when they don't read it, you kind of you you have the chances. There are chances that you will miss some requirements. Miss something. There are some Absolutely. chances that they will misunderstand some requirements because, well, if they didn't read it, how would they even understand it? To then misunderstand, right? Mm -hmm. So to prevent all of those um, missing requirements and misunderstanding requirements, you could use conceptual modeling. It's more of a database or data centric. Uh, technique, but of course it helps your database, the preparation of your database when you're developing a software. Uh, it helps it helps you put things in place. So I'm going to mm. talk a little bit. Let me get you indul indulge me here for a second. Okay. I just want to talk a little bit about how it, it relates to software development. Give it, dive a little bit deeper. Huh? So when teams okay. or organizations, when they are developing software, there's a role or someone in a position that's called a database administrator. So this person can actually be uh, a database administrator but with business analysis background mm. or vice versa. So what they do is they prepare storage for all the data that's going to come into the software that you're developing. Yeah. They have to prepare a place for it. And that's where, where they use the idea of entities. And the entity mm. is just like a bucket. Like think, think of it like a container, right? So yeah. this, they put a container here that's going to store uh, all the customer information, customer name, customer address, customer uh, I, uh, poster code and all that. They, they prepare a bucket to store mm. all of this information. And then they prepare another bucket to store maybe order information. So order ID, order uh, okay. information, right? Mm -hmm. And what that does is it's, it makes things easy and accessible, right? So when data come into the software that you've developed, it knows where exactly to go to. to so go, that when you start yeah. to then pull those data out, the coding that developers are going to write mm -hmm. will know how to you know, <laughs> go into each where bucket. To to pull. <laughs> exactly, then... that's the thing. It knows where to go to pull information and then to present it to the user that needs mm. the information. So that's the awesome. idea of just preparing mm. your database so that when information comes in, it knows where to go and they're not just uh, dangling <laughs> uh, or... <laughs> in in or cyberspace. Startup. Startup. Exactly. So that's how organizations use it when they're developing softwares, uh, software and how... Uh, then that's where you come in. So how, Kedio, hmm. how can we possibly relate this to daily living? Oh, you know what, Ola, before we even go to daily living, there's something that just struck me right now. Guys, this is, I mean, this is a, a aha moment for somebody that's always thought, ah, oh, business analysis, oh my God, uh, I will have to, you know, data, data, data. But we're talking about pictures here. Who would have thought, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, data is important. Numbers, you know, data analysis, they do what data analysts do, but business analysis will bring all the data into pictorial form that is right. digestible, understandable, exactly. you know, for whoever is going to be looking at it. And then it's relatable too, because we forget numbers. People forget numbers quite easily. But when you're talking about pictures, like it's on the wall, it's like stamped literally in your mind, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. So if we're talking about um, conceptual modeling, what comes to mind is very easy. I know this, this might sound super simplistic, but guys, it's about the same thing. It's like, how do you feed your family? You have a family of two, or you want to feed yourself, you want to lose weight, or whatever your goal is. I'm talking about healthy living. Mm. The easiest thing you would do for yourself, instead of saying, when I wake up in the morning, I'm just going to go to my fridge, open it, whatever I find is what I eat. Uh, oh, bad idea. Bad 
absolutely bad idea all that trust me i've been there done that uh, don't let's even dive into that right. but the point i'm trying to make is if your goal is to eat healthy your goal is to feel the, feed your family healthy food or your goal is to lose weight your goal is to whatever it is that has to do with food and i'm just going to i mean going to lean here and say that one of the greatest things you can do for yourself is your food what you're putting it into your tummy they say take care of your body for the first 50 years and then it will take care of you for the next 50 years right okay so we're talking about a meal plan one of the greatest thing you can do for yourself is have a meal plan whatever your goal is if it is so eat more of protein eat more of carbohydrate eat balanced diet lose weight feed your family healthy food or make life easy because sometimes when you have a family the easiest thing you can do as far as food is just make have a meal plan and what is the meal plan this is a predetermined schedule of meals and snacks that helps you as an individual or as a family organize your food intake and then make healthier choices mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. save you from kids waking up in the morning and saying, mom, what's my breakfast? Go Absolutely. to the meal plan. And it's, it's a visual <laughs> representation too, right? It's a visual representation. It's structured, it's outlined. And what happens is I feel like the more you look at the meal plan, the more it registered mm -hmm. in your subconscious. Absolutely. Such that on a, on a Tuesday, you already know what you're going to eat because mm -hmm. you've done it last Tuesday, you've done it two Tuesdays ago, right? On Saturday, you know, if it's your cheat day, I recommend maybe you should put cheat day, cheat, uh, cheating into that meal plan and what? go crazy uh, on a certain day. But let's go back to meal plans. Oh, yeah. It being a visual <laughs> representation. <laughs> oh my God, what am I going to do with this young lady? <laughs> Your day? What in the world is that? Anyway, I'm going to hold you to that after this show. We're going to have to delve into what 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 in the world is that? Anyway, guys, meal plan. And generally speaking, where do we put our meal plans? On the fridge. On the fridge. On the fridge, on the fridge where everyone can see it. And mm -hmm. where? What's in the fridge? Part of the meal that you're gonna eat is in the fridge, so that's like your storage. That's your database, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's your that's your, your database or your pantry, right? That's where you store the mm -hmm. food. And so you put them in order. At times, if you're like me, when I was really crazy, uh, uh trying to lose weight, right? I prepare my meal just once a week, and then I put it into tiny, tiny bowls, oh and then I arrange them God. in the fridge, and then I pick one for Monday, I know the one to pick for Tuesday, I know the one to pick for Wednesday, and all that. But what I'm essentially saying is, Ola, there is what you're saying is you're that... crazy. Nobody does that nonsense. We okay. put, what we do is we put, food in the, we put food in the fridge, and then we go get it, period. Come on. If, Oh, you're like going me on this morning. a little bit of OCD. Yes, you could go. You could do that actually. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. At this point, I really need to know if you're watching this and you're actually like all and you put stuff in the fridge, label them Monday, Tuesday, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday evening, Tuesday. Come on, guys. If you're like that, let us know because that's, that's organization. That's going away. Organization, right? You organize things and then it helps it saves you time like as a as against trying you now you cook and then you start serving at the last minute no you already okay. have it there just pick it and go all right if you're like all of that you have to plan your life to the min last second or you're like me that put it in the fridge you'll find it there and then i mean hmm. yeah whatever let's let's know about that but we're saying for a meal plan this is predetermined it's on the fridge. You have Monday morning. You know, if you're like me, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then mon morning or breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And sometimes I've learned when my boys were growing, they're still growing anyway, to put snack in there. Because if you don't yeah. plan mm -hmm. for the snack, <laughs> that might actually <laughs> make you go. <laughs> so, it will make you go bankrupt oh, yeah. or, 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 or snack rot, mm -hmm. right? You have a plan. It's on the fridge. And the reason why it's on the fridge is no when everybody's coming from the hot sun, from the cold weather, you're going to the fridge, you're pulling that thing. So it helps everyone to be able to see what the plan is, to know what the plan is, to understand what the plan is, and to buy in into the plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Get, getting so, buying is essential too, right? Because you cannot just develop that meal plan on your own. It has to be <laughs> in collaboration with your family and what again you want to put at the back of your mind when you're developing that meal plan is the the oh healthy living that comes with it right 
you cannot just focus on carbohydrates. It has to be a, a carbohydrate, protein, <laughs> fat, uh, all the essentials, yeah. right? You know, I'm, I'm just, I couldn't stop giggling. I remember, uh, you know, one of those back in the day when we were having this meal plan and my husband was saying, oh yeah, let's put in um, carrots in there for snack. And, you know, one of my boys turned and like, Carrots for snacks. Are, are we okay. rabbits? <laughs> <laughs> and, and my mother was like, What? Where did that come from? But up to today, yeah. it's it's a thing in the house. If you want everybody to have a gig, we just say, Are we rabbits? Are we rabbits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's oh. Really cool. Fun <laughs> times, fun times, fun times. Anyway. You put it on the on the on your list, and then it's there for everyone to see, for everyone to understand. And like Ola said, God help you that you you sit on your own table as a mom, and you have that meal planned without involving the entire members of the family. Your stakeholders. Uh, you're gonna rewrite if you don't involve your stakeholders or your major stakeholders. You're gonna rewrite that meal plan, or no one will follow it. Is what you yeah. discover. No one will yeah. follow it. So it has so, to be done in collaboration. Shall, yeah. Yeah. With family members and then once you have your meal plan you can see in fact not only you almost everyone that comes close enough to your family to get to your fridge can see what the what the plan is they can see where your family is going as far as health and healthy eating right, right. because it's there for everyone to see and that's the same way it is in um in organizations once you have this concept model everyone can see it your stakeholders can see it you know the team members can see it people from other teams too can see it because it's clear for everyone to see so you can and also then, look at it yeah sorry go ahead yeah so sorry i was just going to chime in quickly to say and then it drives conversation the things that they haven't your stakeholders haven't thought about up until the time they see that visual representation they'll be like oh my god i haven't thought about that have you thought about this have you thought of... so it drives it, it it drives conversation and then if you as a business analyst or whoever is mm -hmm. using that conceptual modeling because i feel anyone could use it if you master yeah. it properly it's a technique yeah. right whoever is using it you are able to elicit like pull information out of your stakeholders by saying okay do you think this should be long here or that should be long here? and then they would either counter yeah. it or clarify yeah. you know okay. yeah. yes or no answer to that so mm -hmm. again we're saying benefits of having a meal plan or having a conceptual modeling in business analysis is one it saves you time oh, yeah. like once you make that plan you're not coming back to say oh what are we going to eat in the morning again and like me my kids they like to ask questions but now all i need to say is go to the fridge we all agree it's on there or what I, and then when you look at the plan you know what is missing family oh, members yeah. can see what is missing requirements are not missed in the business analysis world because they can see like for instance like mom where is ice cream on this timetable <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's do yeah. that. Let's let's do that for Sunday night when we're doing maybe movie night or everybody's just hanging out, you know, Sunday evening. We do that. Where yeah. is whatever it is on this people can ask questions, they can chip in and then you can look at it. So it saves you time and then you're not going back, you know, time and time again. The other thing is yeah. if you have to go grocery shopping, oh you yeah. Know, it saves you money. Oh, yeah. It saves you money, mm -hmm. right? You have to buy ingredients in bulk, so you don't buy in bits and pieces. Yeah. If you're like me, that signed up with Costco a while ago and then cancelled and then signed back up, <laughs> you buy things in bulk. So your grocery mm -hmm. shopping, your your purchases, you're reducing food waste because yeah. you. I mean, you have the list, you already know what you're gonna make in the next one, two weeks. So you buy yeah. things in bulk, right? I Your overall them, grocery yeah. expenses, it's kind of low. When you sum it up at the end of a month, mm -hmm. if you are the type yeah. that keeps track of your expenses every month, you'll see how you save when you have a meal plan and you follow it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, absolutely. And again, back to business, what this does is when everybody knows what we're doing, the, the concept has been modeled, it saves rework because somebody will not now come later and say, oh, by the way, we forgot. No. Because remember, everybody had a buy-in. Right. Everybody understands what we're doing. Everybody understands where we're going. So the same thing with like the meal plan that we're, we're alluding, here, alluding to here, that it saves you stress. It, it saves you time. Stress. Oh, because now oh, yeah. you wake up in the 
one, you know, I always say to my, my um, coaching clients that help your brain to help you. Mm. So when you have a plan, your brain is not bothered about, oh, what are we going to eat tomorrow morning? Or you stay there in the morning and you're wasting five minutes scratching your head thinking, ah, no, I don't feel like this. I feel like that. You know what to do. Your body just obeys. Mm. Go, mm. go get it. And then, you know, boom, you're done. So it reduces stress. And the time you should do, you would waste ultimately trying to figure out what will I eat or how will I cook it or I'm missing this ingredient. That time is used for something else, something more productive, right? Yes. yes yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of one now, the benefit of having that visual representation, mm -hmm. having that outlined structure, it, it improves your nutrition knowledge. Because yeah. again, yeah. before you put this picture together, this outline this structured outline together mm. you make a little bit of research here and there to see what food falls under carbohydrate what food is considered yeah. as protein what food is considered as healthy fat mm -hmm. right and then you mix and match you remember see, Hola, see my I'm, I'm hoping... healthy fat <laughs> oh my god oh Ola, you're a clown anyway so, yeah healthy you, fat. you you improve your nutrition knowledge essentially right you, you do a little bit of google here google <laughs> there and then you you sprinkle carbohydrates and protein and healthy fats here and there in your structured outline but then you're guaranteed that you ha you having a balanced diet. You're diet, guaranteed absolutely. that absolutely. you're nurturing your family with something that is nutritional and is going to help their growth. Absolutely. Right? And then before yeah, you know it, you see those those young kids growing into uh, young adults and giving you good baritone voice. If you have bo if you have boys and if you have girls, you see them, you know, evolving into uh, good looking young ladies. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we're saying here is, again, you know, sometimes, and I've heard like a couple of people say, Kemi, I don't want to become a business analyst. I just love the knowledge that understanding the concept of business analyst add to my life. Maybe you're already established in your career and you're thinking to yourself, ah, nah, I love what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it. But you know, listening to us over and over because like i said i've had a couple of people say this to me that hey me i'm going to take the course not because i want to become a business analyst but i see the value like for instance we're talking about all these techniques these are things you can use in your current um profession or even in your everyday life so this analysis is analysis anything that has to do with being analytical helps you on the long run improves your lifestyle improves your standard of living improves your brain power absolutely i mean the word analysis means breaking things down you're down. breaking things down so if you're already doing it if you already so for instance if you're solving a problem and you know how to break problems down mm. to actually re mm. reach the root cause and then eventually yeah. figure out that problem you're already doing some form of analysis, analysis. right so yes. uh and if you're Let's... doing tight bits and bits bits and, bits and pieces say... like that yeah go ahead <laughs> let's help you put the business in the analysis that you're already I like doing that. i really like that let's help you put the business if you if you if you want to take your analysis skills to another level so as against just helping yourself as an individual or helping mm -hmm. another fellow um as an individual you want to help companies organizations Organization. right absolutely problems i mean solve those problems uh, look at those uh, uh opportunities that could yeah. that it could seize absolutely mm -hmm. Again, that brings us back to mastering business analysis because we got to wrap up this yeah, show yeah, right now. Yeah, That's yeah, where time, mastering yeah, time business is... analysis comes in. It's a 10 week course mm -hmm. and it is endorsed by the International Institute of Business Analysis, right? That's the governing body of that profession, the business analysis profession. Yeah. This course, mastering business analysis, is endorsed by them. And what that's, that means is they've already put their trust in us that mm -hmm. we could provide you that information to take you from where you are right now yeah. if, 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 if you're an entry-level business analyst or you are the, the, i like the word that um the phrase that kdo used a while ago a business analyst enthusiast 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 <laughs> yeah you're enthusiastic about business analysis and you want to you know transition to business analysis that course is for you or if you're already a seasoned business analyst and you want to renew your certification the one you already have or the one you plan yeah. to have whatever right you need 
PDUs to do that renewal, mm -hmm. right? This course is for you because it gives you 30 PDUs upon completion. And so these, these are the yeah. value proposition that this course brings to you and to organizations. Absolutely. So you want to take it for yeah, take all that, you know, I know that we come on this show, we laugh a lot, we giggle, we just have fun. But guys, what will not be funny is you remaining who you are, where you are right now, till the end of 2023. That is absolutely not funny. You've got goals, you've got aspirations, you've got to get up and do it. Life will not come knocking on your door. You've got to go out there, you've got to put yourself out there, you've got to stand up and get that training, get that degree, get that certification, get that whatever that you're looking for. And that's what we're encouraging you. We might laugh, we might do all of this funny stuff, but see, your life is important. You've got to be growing every single day. We're already in August. 2023 is gradually coming to an end. What, what, what's going to be in your hand okay. by December 2023? You right. want to say, okay, I have achieved X, Y, Z as far as the year is concerned. So I encourage you. I challenge you. I'm hoping to provoke you to take action. Oh, on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes, guys. Buy into yourself build right. yourself do what you said you were going to do in january make yourself make the, the the you that got into january i mean the one that's going to live in 2023 december whatever it is to 2024 make it a better version of yourself don't stay stagnant actualize okay. i that's usually my... say actualize uh -huh. your potentials and you have lots of those potentials in you you need to Absolutely. actualize them Okay. That's my three We're minutes spent a lot of time. time. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of time on the show today. Uh, we encourage you to join in our next episode of Business Analysis Simplified, where we like to say intelligence meets creativity because we've we've actually talked about a lot of intelligence stuff, right? Uh, in oh. this show today, right? We've drawn yeah. parallels between conceptual modeling and meal plan. Mm -hmm. Who, who mm. could ever think? Who could ever think that there's a link <laughs> no, right? between those two, right? And then we add humor to it. So human reigns supreme here uh, um, in in our show as well. So until then, we encourage you to embrace the magic of intentional living. Be intentional about your life and actualize mm -hmm. your potential. Until then, Alrighty. let's say bye in the Queen's way. So bye. <laughs> Hola, it's a <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. All Bye. Right. Take care. Bye.